by the, any of our wildest dreams 40 years ago. Uh, I don't think any of us imagined that we'd have an opportunity to play in a bowl game. And uh, we're certainly appreciative of that. And uh, just really, again, want to thank uh, everyone associated with, the, with this bowl game, giving us the opportunity to showcase uh, two great football conferences. And uh, just, uh, it's going to be a special occasion. All right, questions? Bring it to your left, sweater. Uh, yes, Coach Hobson, Charles Bishop, uh, nice Charles Reveals inside the HCC Sports Lab, uh, KCOH Radio, uh, 1230 Houston, Texas. Uh, at some point uh, during the course of the year, North Carolina a t has played three different quarterbacks. And I wanted to ask, does that present uh, any sort of challenges in terms of preparation for North Carolina a t I don't think it does. I, I think, um, you know, certainly they're, they're in offense. They believe in what they do, and they do it extremely well. But, uh, you know, each quarterback at times has – a different personality, you know, so that's always something that you have to prepare for. But, you know, that's our job as a defense, you know, we have to prepare for that. And, um, you know, so, but yes, it is a little bit more difficult, but, um, you know, certainly, um, you know, we've got to prepare for it. Still on this side with Tony. Antonio. Antonio. Hey, Antonio. 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 Hey, Antonio. Um, is Atlanta the goal now for? SWAC programs, do you feel like, or is it still SWAC title and Atlanta is just something that that comes with that? No, it's it's Atlanta, you know what I mean, because you have to go through the SWAC title to get to Atlanta, you know, so certainly the first goal is Houston, the second goal is Atlanta, um, but I, I think uh, every football team wants to go as far as they can go, and uh, you know, we know this is as far as we can go, we have one more game left, so certainly it's, it's a, a great opportunity for our, for our program and for both conferences. And I know, uh, I would imagine North Carolina AT feels the same way. Certainly a great privilege and honor. Mark Rickman, Oprah Sports. Jay, what type of impact can playing in front of a national audience kicking off bowl season, being on ABC, uh, provide for the program and for recruiting specifically? I think, you know, it's it's advertisement and it's uh, media coverage that you just, you know, you can't buy, you can't really sum it up. You know, you get, we get an opportunity to showcase Alcorn State University in front of a national TV audience. Millions of people will tune in and uh, be alert and aware of what Alcorn State University is, is doing. You know, we represent our university tomorrow. And uh, that's certainly a great honor and a privilege for all of us as players and coaches. Uh, and again, you know, you hope it has a big impact on, on recruiting. You know, anytime you can get exposure, that's certainly a big thing. But uh, I, you know, I want to again commend the Celebration Bowl because they're, they're bringing exposure to, to teams and two wonderful conferences. And uh, you know, again, I, I, I hope when everyone uh, gets through watching the game, they will really have a true respect. Uh, for both the SWAC and the MEAC and, and the uh, competition level that we play at. Left side still, Coach. Uh, yes, Charles Bishop again. Charles. Uh, Coach, I have to ask the question. We saw John Gibbs Jr. toward the end of the SWAC championship uh, game. Uh, is there a chance that uh, we might see John Gibbs tomorrow or will we stay the course with Lenore Swift? Well, you know, I mean, there's always a chance. You know, there's always a chance. Uh, Lenore's and John is getting healthier, and he certainly is going to be dressed out, ready to play. John is watching run. He's probably about, you know, 90, 95. He's getting there. You know, Lenore's is has done a tremendous job the last six weeks of the season. Uh, Lenore's will be our starter on Saturday, and again, we we're blessed with two outstanding quarterbacks. And uh, you know, John, if he, yeah, I'm, would be lying if I said he's completely healthy. And, but at the end of the day, uh, both he is ready to play, and if need be, but Norris is uh, going to start the game, and again, both of them have started six games for us, both of them have done a tremendous job, and, and I say that as a football coach, very seldom do you have the opportunity to have two great quarterbacks. You know, John last year was the HBCU National Player of the Year, and there's many times in spring, we would walk off the spring as coaches and go, man, we got a battle right here, you know, and, and the, the reality is we've got two outstanding football players at that position. Both of them have done a tremendous job for our football program. 
Uh, it just so happens one is 100% completely healthy right now, the other one's in that 90% range, but uh, again, both will be dressed out and ready to play on Saturday. Over to your right, then we'll come back left quick. Don Stitz with DNA Sports Talk. Coach, in your practicing for such a big game, do you go back to basics or do you try to add new wrinkles that A&T won't be yeah, able to have figure out? Yeah, we have a bunch of wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> No, you know, we'll keep that a little bit close to the cuff, but uh, you know, you, you, you know, eventually you all kind of are what you are. But each game is a little bit different. That's just the reality of football. No matter which opponent you're playing, you always have a different game plan. And back to the left. Uh, Jimmy Cavill, yeah. inside the HBCU Sports Land again. Okay. Uh, wanted to follow up and ask a little about going inside the numbers. When you look at this team, you share with us the relationship that we found out this week with you and Coach Broadway going back to Florida and coaching together. As I look at this team, this group, <coughs> and these games, it seems like there's a mirror image between the teams in a lot of ways. Does that make it more challenging or easier when you're looking at the preparation for the Well, they're, they're, like I said, they're, they're an extremely well-coached football team, a very talented football team. They wouldn't be playing in this game if they weren't a really good football team. So the reality is we know we've got an excellent football team that we've got to prepare for, and again, as far as uh, Coach Broadway's concerned, I've known Rod a long time and utmost respect, an outstanding football coach. And uh, we know, I mean, anytime you're playing in a bowl game that has a national championship uh, riding on it, you know, it's a, uh, we know the opponent is going to be a very, very good football team. And that's just the reality of it. Coach uh, Charles Eppin with Alcorn Radio. Coach, Charles, question. I know you at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, Coach, the question was asked of the players, which team does North Carolina A&T resemble? As you look at, you know, A&T, what team in the conference that we played kind of mirrors their style? Yeah, that's kind of hard to say. Uh, you know, I think each team is different. You know, they really are. There's no team that's exactly uh, like another team. Uh, uh, you know, they're, they're a football team that, uh, again, it, it plays hard. Uh, they're, like, again, they're extremely well coached. Uh, they have playmakers on offense, you know, in the return game. Uh, again, I, I wish I could answer that better for you, Charles, but I just don't know if there's a team that I could sit there and say, oh, yeah, these guys are just like those guys. Uh, I don't think they are. They're, they're their own, they have their own identity, and they're a very good football team. Coach, we got Mark in the back, then Antonio. Coach Mark Gray, Happy Sports Radio Network. <laughs> um, you know Coach Broadway real well. He knows you real well. Your two teams are mirror images of one another. Doesn't seem like there's going to be a whole lot of fooling around. Is this a, uh, to use a fight analogy, is this a uh, in the middle of the ring slugfest tomorrow? Well, you, you got a huge uh, bowl game with big implications tomorrow. So, you know, you know. Uh, both teams are going to be excited to play. You know that's just the reality of it. Again, they're a football team that has our utmost respect, Mark. I mean, when you look at what North Carolina A&T has done. Uh, they've just done a, a, a tremendous job. We all know um, they fall through a tough schedule and uh, had some some big wins. And, and again, and I say it over and over, but they've got our utmost respect as a football team, and, and we know we have to be ready to play them all. Frank in the front, coach. Tell me. Hey, Coach, um, you guys played in Houston in NRG City in back-to-back -back years. You guys played in Atlanta earlier this year at Georgia Tech. Do you feel like the, this group of players has kind of grown comfortable with the bigger <coughs> stadiums and the bigger, the bigger settings? You know, um, I don't know, Antonio. We, we, we have played in a few pro stadiums, which is always good, you know, because it's not really a, a new venue. You know, I think it, there's some familiarity when you come out of the dressing room. So it's not like the first time that you walk around in, in an NFL stadium. But the one thing that is nice about the SWAC and the one thing we're proud of is there's many games in our conference that we come out and play in front of big crowds. And, uh, you know, we always talk to our players about, you know, anytime we're playing Southern or Jackson or, or Alabama State or even sometimes we have a big Valley, you know, the list goes on. But there's a lot of games we'll walk out. We'll be playing in front of large crowds. So that always helps, you know. And I know a few years ago with our football team, I think we played Mississippi State and Starville. And then later on that year, we went up to Lucas Oil and played Grambling in uh, Lucas Oil Stadium in front of a nice crowd there. And so, 
it helps, and we're fortunate enough. We play some games. You know, we used to have four to five games every year, if not more, where we're playing in front of those thirty thousand plus to sixty-five thousand plus crowds, and that's 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 always a good thing. And I, I think you know, you know, I don't know. I think what goes on on the field is what's important, but it, I guess the familiarity may help a little bit. Got time for one more question. Coach, if you can talk about the job of your offensive defensive coordinator when you coming in with the top three defense and the top 11 offense. They're outstanding coaches. I'm just amazed that they found a woman to marry them. It's the biggest thing that I'm uh, They're outstanding football coaches and uh, just do a tremendous job. And I'm blessed that uh, they were sitting right there, Fred Kais and Tony Pecoraro. I'm blessed that uh, they decided to, to join us and be on, be on our staff. And, just tr truly blessed. Great, not only great football coaches, but great men. Thank you, Coach. Right. Thank you. Again, a reminder.